continue the conversation at dannymorell.com backslash awaken you. Welcome to this week's episode of The Higher Self. I think you're in for a treat, especially if you find it difficult to deal with your emotions, to deal with anxiety, or if you or someone you love is battling cancer right now. Chris Carr, how are you? I'm so good. It's good to be with you. Thank good you. Good to be here as well. I, 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 I got to ask you, in 30 seconds or less, why should they listen to this episode until the very end? What do you think they're going to get out of it? You know, every single one of us is going to experience a time when our world falls apart, whatever that looks like for us, whether it's a diagnosis, the loss of a loved one, a miscarriage, a divorce. For me, it was cancer diagnosis and then ultimately losing somebody very dear to me to cancer. And I think the more we're able to understand how our big messy emotions are here to actually teach us things and how that we're able to surf these storms that are inevitable and they will come, the easier it is for us to get back to fully alive living, which I believe is the reason why we're here in the first place. Yeah, it's I like to say we can't have the rainbow and not expect some rain. I love that. Speaking about the rain, where where did your rain begin? Valentine's Day, two thousand and three. I love how you know, like you know. Oh yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> that must have been a tough storm. <laughs> it was. Wow. So I was diagnosed with a rare and incurable stage four cancer. That was 21 years ago. And I've been living- Hold on, 21 years ago? Yes. Wow. 21 years ago. And I've been living with stage four cancer ever since. So I'm a cancer thriver. I'm a wellness coach. These are things that I hadn't planned on being when I grew up. <laughs> you know, I didn't say, oh, this is what I'm going to do with my life. But for many of us, our lives change as a result of these warning signs or wake-up calls. And for me, um, the first doctor that I spoke to suggested a triple organ transplant. So I didn't know much about medicine at the time, but I thought that was nuts. Right. <laughs> the next doctor gave me 10 years to live. The one after that suggested radical treatments that wouldn't do anything. And so it inspired me to become what I call the CEO of my health. Stop right there. I, I cannot express like what I'm feeling right now and how important I think it is for every human being to listen to what you're about to say. Because I don't know what you're about to say, but I can feel like you, you, you're, you're there. Like I, I know, I know you're tapped in. Like I feel that. Mm. I feel that. What, what did that mean for you to become the CEO of your own life? And 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 my yeah. God, the power and strength, and the conviction and courage you must have felt to say no to what the mainstream says you have to do with your own body. Well, for me, it was about saying, I have to be the leader of my life and to learn how to become my own patient advocate. And wellness is a business. And I decided I would be the, the CEO of me. And so first it was about finding the doctor that knew the most about my disease, who had his finger on the pulse of the latest research and treatment. Because again, I live with a very rare cancer. So there's less known about rare cancers, partly because there's less funding. And so it was like finding a needle in a, in a haystack. But when I did find him, he said something very interesting to me. He said, you know, your disease is a total black box. We need to establish a baseline. So we're going to watch and wait and let cancer make the first move. And we're not going to do anything. Because sometimes it can be slow growing and sometimes it can be aggressive. So we're going to track you. But while we're doing that, you go off and watch and live and get busy living. And that was like this permission, but also I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know how to do that. And so I literally left the hospital and I went to the grocery store and I bought vegetables because I figured vegetables are good for you. I guess I'll, sh I'll start there and slowly figure it out because none of us come to this planet with an owner's manual, right? And figuring it out and then teaching people what I've learned is what I've been doing for the last 21 years. Wow. Talk, talk to me about that. Talk to me about, you started with food. I did. Right? And, yeah. I, and I think that it's so interesting. Uh, Jen and I went on a little day date yesterday. There's a, a place here in, in uh, Austin called Nourished. The mm. name alone says it all. Yeah. And it's like really gut-friendly food. And as I was getting the plate, 
right? And we started to eat. I looked over at Jen. I literally tasted this. I said, Baby, they made this food with love. Mm. You could feel the energy and the frequency of the food was different. And I feel like when we are not awakened to the importance of food, like we're out here just eating dead food, like mm -hmm. that isn't really nourishing our bodies on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So let's start there, right? How, how has food um, made an impact on your journey? In a very big way. So that's where I started because I felt so out of control. And I thought the one thing I can control is what I put in my body, what I put on my body. And then much later I realized how I'm talking to myself and how I'm taking care of my mental well being. But with food, it was a good place to begin because the truth is I wasn't feeling well. I didn't have a lot of energy. And this was you know, outside of even cancer. And I thought, well, if I start on my plate and I can start to make a little bit of traction, then what else can I accomplish? And you said it, I began with taking care of my gut health. And we know that our gut is really the heart and soul of our immune system. And I began to practice a whole foods, plant-based diet. And in the beginning, I didn't know what I was doing, but I just started to get cookbooks and try to make things in my kitchen and then certification programs. And slowly but surely, you find your way. And again, you start to feel better. And uh, then I you know, wrote some books about that and cookbooks and whatnot. And, and that's where it began is how I nourished myself. But it didn't stop there. It really wasn't until my 10 year anniversary or cancerversary where I got to be honest with you, I, I was a little frustrated because I was doing all of this self-care and I was teaching people a lot of what I was learning. I was already a New York Times bestseller. And I felt as though I was failing unless I was completely cured. Mm. And we went to my 10 year scan and my doctor's thrilled, my family's thrilled. The only person that wasn't thrilled was me. Mm. And I realized that there's a big difference between, between curing and healing, right? Curing may happen and it happens in the physical body, but I've been living with stage four cancer for 21 years, right? My disease continues to be stable. And yet there was a part of me putting my life off until the doctor said, you're in remission until everything looked perfect on paper. And I said, what a waste, what have I lived this big, wonderful, beautiful life. I met my husband as a result of this incredible journey. What if I lived this big life, but I never really lived it because it wasn't good enough. And that's when I realized that my path is a healing path because healing can happen for every single one of us at every stage, even beyond our physical bodies. And that's what I practice today. So I teach people how to become empowered participants in their health and healing, whether they're patients or they never want to be patients. And just how um, powerful it is to be on this healing path, body, mind, and spirit. It's impossible for you to have a successful relationship with another human being or a partner if you don't have a successful relationship with yourself. And what we as human beings don't realize is that we are deeply disconnected. We're disconnected from Mother Earth. We're disconnected from peace. We're disconnected from love. What we do at Awaken is we curate different exercises to help you reconnect first to yourself and then the beautiful process of reconnecting to everybody begins. And that's why Awaken is so powerful. You'll do more in three days at Awaken than you would do 30 years anywhere else. I was so stuck and now I feel peace. Awaken has been the best thing we have done for our marriage. Coming here, I realized that the answers were inside of me all the time. Head on over to dannymorell.com backslash awaken now to get your tickets today. Yeah. It's so wild to me that you're here right now. Last night, um, I've been on this journey with food for a while. And um, I was vegan for four years. And I was having some issues sleeping, um, which as a result of being vegan, I correlated it with being vegan, mm. which brought me back to a journey of eating um, animal protein mm. again. And which about two weeks ago, I'm laying in bed after sleeping a full night's sleep 
and I cannot get out of bed. Hmm. I literally couldn't get out of bed. And I, and I tell Jen, I said, baby, I don't have the energy to even move right now. And something told me like, I'm just stuck with a bunch of like dead yeah. stuff in here, <laughs> right? And I'm like, maybe this isn't working for me. So then I go back to eating a predominantly mm -hmm. plant-based diet, right? I, I do, I do organic, we do all that. And maybe once a week I'll have a little animal mm -hmm. protein if that's what, what, what I'm sensing or I'm listening to. But last night I didn't sleep. And I realized that I overate. Mm -hmm. And the overeating caused my gut to be so stimulated that I thought to myself, oh my God, what you just said is so true. And you're literally here to confirm it. Like, this is like my third brain. Because we essentially have three brains, mm -hmm. right? The, the brain, the heart, and, mm -hmm. and the gut right? And it was really wild to me to see that like, because of my actions, because of overeating, I stimulated my body so much that whatever happens in there was happening. And it was a big wake up call. And, 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 and this is, this is wild. What I always tell you guys is that you don't ever have to know how, but life tends to be so magical in there and where I don't think there's any coincidence that you're here mm -hmm. literally just a couple of af hours <laughs> after that happened to me. Yeah. That's amazing. You know, I, I really resonate with what you're talking about because I'm a big believer in listening to ourselves. And the more we're able to, I think, first and foremost, create that relationship with ourselves and hopefully at some point get to the point and the place where we enjoy our own company, the easier it is to tap into that intuition, that deep wisdom, that knowing. And I think that we complicate things. And well-being is a little easier than we think. It doesn't mean that it's always easy to practice. But oftentimes I see, certainly in my profession, there's always the latest hack or the latest trend or fad. We're always trying to mess with our beautiful bodies that are so much wiser than we are. And if we can just go back to the, the basics, I teach what I call the five pillars of wellness. And that's about being mindful of what you're eating, what you're drinking, what you're thinking, and how you're resting and renewing. And those pillars rest on a foundation of stress management. And stress, another way to say stress is inflammation. So whether you're taking care of your gut, you're taking care of your mental well-being, you're taking care of your heart, what you're really doing is taking care of your inflammation. Mm. And inflammation is the root of most, if not all, chronic diseases. Okay, so I literally want to be a student here, yeah. right? So how do I take care of my mind? And most importantly, how did you realize that that was one of the issues? Like, take me back to that moment, and then, like, what did you do to start being more kind to yourself in your mind? I realized it was an issue because I was living with fear and anxiety about what if, what if, is today the day cancer gets turned on, you know? And there were moments when I would be not present with the people in my life because I was in a fear spiral or I was ruminating with anxiety. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. Absolutely, right? absolutely. It happens to many of us. And what I have learned is we can't amputate any of our emotions and expect to be whole. And wholeness is our goal. But what we can do is start to get curious about them and understand that in my opinion, emotions are two things. One, they're information, they're here to teach us something, and they're energy, and energy needs to move. When it's stagnant, we become stagnant, and we become ill. And so for me, thinking, okay, I am a marathon runner. I have to go the distance with stage four cancer. I hope it doesn't wake up, but if it does someday, I wanna have the fortitude and the resilience and the um, wherewithal to handle that. But it's a mental game for me more than anything right now. And so saying, okay, fear is here. What is fear all about? What is the anatomy of fear? What does it have to teach me? Why do I have it in the first place? It's here to protect me. Same thing with anxiety. It's really when those emotions get out of control or out of balance where we start to feel the, the ultimate pain of them. So if I can start to understand that when I am in an anxious place, I'm having an out of mind, out of body experience. 
what can I do to bring myself back to that present moment? We were just talking about how you love to work out and you have a gym. Going to that gym and getting on your treadmill or your bike or lifting weights, it re- literally brings you back into your body. Instead of for me, oh my God, what's going to happen at the next scan? What of this? What of that? What of this? In that moment, right now, I'm sitting here with you. I am not at the next scan. Mm-hmm. Cancer has not turned on. And yet my body doesn't know the difference because I'm activating all of the fight or flight responses and cascade of hormones in my body. So I can literally stop, drop, and come back to myself through the breath, through movement, through calling my best friend, through being with the people that we love. It's like changing the channel and coming back to the present. Mm. When we're in fear, when we're in anxiety, where it's almost like a dog licking a hot spot, right? It's like we gotta break the focus, throw the tennis ball and come back to us. Because in this moment, all is well. That's right. Absolutely. And I think people might be listening and they might say, you know, in many ways, especially for people who suffer with anxiety, that that could be easier said than done, you know? Um, But here you are um, living, literally living proof that you know, in what could be for most people a a pretty scary thing, you have found a way to like overcome it. I I gotta be honest with you. I didn't know when you showed up here that you had cancer. I actually mistaken you. I thought that you were like a child psychologist or something (laughs) like that. So then when Casper shows me the notes, because because the you look so healthy and so vibrant and you have a wonderful smile and you look like you really embody life. So I, I just want all of you guys to really realize that like you could, you're an embodiment of the fact that you can be and overcome anything. And I want to take it a step further. What I teach people is that a lot of times in our life, our trauma, our woundings, the, the yeah. worst things that happen to us could lead us to our life's purpose. And that's what happened with you. Without it, question. Yeah. It led you to your work. It led you to your husband. You know, how did you go about that process, right? It's one thing to take care of yourself, but then it's another to like find passion in wanting to help and take care of the world, right? Yeah. Well, just going back to anxiety for a minute, because I I have not overcome it, but it's a practice. So all of these tools that I think that we develop and tools that you teach, they're there for us when we need them, right? They're there when the rug gets pulled out from under us, when we're having a panic attack, when we're in a very difficult time and they don't make it go away, but they can start sort of start to thaw it out so that you can come back to yourself. And there have been times along the way in my journey where medication was very helpful, right? So I bless all of the things that we use to help us come into our own peace. Um, so to this, <laughs> How did I turn this into, you know, my vocation and something bigger? I'm a creative spirit. So my creativity has always been the thing that I have leaned on when I'm trying to figure things out and when I'm struggling. And so when I was diagnosed, I turned the camera on myself. I came from a film and television background and I decided to tell the story of my experience because I knew that I wasn't the only person out there who was living with stage four cancer, especially as a young adult. I was 31 when I was diagnosed. And there were very little resources back then for people like me. It was a lot for a lot of people who are older, who had gone through raising their children and their second divorce or whatever it was. And here I was, you know, just starting out. And I was like, there's nobody like me out there, you know? So I said, well, I'm gonna make it. And that gave me a focus. And it was a decision. It was a decision and it gave me a focus and it gave me a purpose. And it was also very helpful in dealing with the fear because I could just throw it into my creative process. So my first book came out, my film came out. It was, I was on Oprah, you know, it it, it was actually, it was picked up by Discovery Channel and it premiered here at South by Southwest. And it started me on a trajectory that I hadn't planned for. You know, I remember when I was on Oprah and my website crashed. This was like a little blogspot.com website and back in 2007 that I designed myself. It was the ugliest thing you've ever seen, (laughs) right? And I didn't have an email capture. You know, there was no way because I didn't know what I was doing. 
we were living in Brooklyn and we were sitting on our little couch that we found on the street. My husband and I looked at each other and he helped me make the film. We were like, this is what we're doing. We're helping people. We don't know how to do it, yeah. but we're going to figure it out. Beautiful. I love that. That resilience. So if you've been listening to my podcast, you know I'm a strong believer and proponent of plant medicine's ability to awaken your mind, body, and soul. And many of you have asked me where I recommend going to experience the power of these medicines. And the only place on planet Earth I would ever recommend is Reunion. It's a not-for-profit healing center with over 30 years of experience in Costa Rica, which I trust wholeheartedly. I'm honored to have a line with them to create the Higher Self Scholarship Fund. So $100 from every booking from our community goes into this fund, and we will award the fund to someone like you every couple of months. So help me help others by using the code Danny Reunion when registering. The link to register can be found in the podcast notes, or you can learn more by going to reunionexperience.org. So I, I, I don't think we spoke enough about like diet and food. And I think this is such a big conversation because, you know, if you look anywhere on social media, it's like everyone is now fighting over what to eat and what not to eat, right? Um, and and I have to admit, that's a journey that I had to go on, which mm -hmm. was just learning to listen to what made sense for me, mm -hmm. right? But if you could give us a brief outline of maybe some best practices when it comes to nutrition, and taking care of our gut, what, what would that be? Eat real food, Michael Pollan, mostly plants and not too much. So, and, and when you say real food, because a lot of people don't understand what real food is, like me and you get that, but like real food is not Coca-Cola. Real food is not, you know, uh, Rice Krispies. Real food is not Snickers bars, right? Real food constitutes of what exactly? If it comes from the garden, it's probably something that's good for you, right? Yeah. So it, I want to just take a step back because it's this is hard stuff for a lot of people. And I think that before we go into best practices, what I want to do is soothe anybody out there who might feel overwhelmed because our bodies are very resilient naturally. And it is not about being perfect. I think what we see mostly on social media and Instagram are these diets that people will go on. They're quite extreme and that are very hard for most people to not only do, but certainly stay consistent with. And so if it's made in a lab, it can take a lab to digest. So it, more often than not, are you eating real food? Are you eating food that isn't packaged? Are you eating food that isn't over-processed, that's filled with empty calories and lots of sugar and things that are actually gonna hurt your gut and hurt your immune system. And so my diet is very simple. You know, I'm gonna probably have a salad with some tempeh and beans and rice and avocado and lots of healthy fats and, and foods that are easy to digest. And, you know, a lot of people in my community aren't plant-based and that's okay. I think for me, it's are you practicing these principles more often than not? Are you making vegetables the the main uh, star of your plate as opposed to you know having being a bit player mm -hmm. over on the side yeah. and you don't even want them um, and finding ways to make this delicious and we all come from different cultures and and food is what can unite us and maybe some people have great traditions that they don't want to let go of but then I say well let's find better ways to prepare those foods so that they're a little healthier. Right, It's about the decisions that we make more often than not. And I'll give you one more tip. If you're just starting out, I like to say add before you subtract. Again, trying to get people out of the place of overwhelm because that's what I think in 21 years of doing this really stops us. Yeah. If I can't do it perfect, why bother? So if we start to add some goodness into our life on a daily basis, that could be a smoothie. Right, maybe for you, for me, it's usually the same thing. It's cucumber and kale or whatever greens we have, avocado, berries, probably some hemp seeds, maybe some plant protein, although you know, I'm getting it a lot from my almonds and you know, things like that. They're rich, they're nutritious. I have a 24 to 30 ounce smoothie every morning. It's helping with my gut health. And I'm getting this big blast of plant-based nutrients that's 
filled with the vitamins, minerals, enzymes, phytochemicals, which are the plant, uh, the cancer fighters, antioxidants, which combat free radicals. I didn't even have to cook anything. Right. I put it in the blender. And if the rest of my day goes ex- askew, you did I'm that. winning. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so it's like, what's the one thing we can do? We can make a smoothie and start to add that goodness into our life. Beautiful. I love that. And on a completely other note here, because what you've done is, um, you know, not only as a woman, but as a woman facing something very difficult in life, like you are out making an impact in the world, right? And I always love to ask people, if someone is out there listening, um, 80% of our audience is women, right? And they want to say, you know, enough is enough. You know, I want to make an impact on the world. I want to find my life's purpose. I, I want to get more creative. You know, I want to step into my own creative spirit. Like, how did you do that? Like, and, and how could they? I didn't take no for an answer. I absolutely love that answer. <laughs> so my film, which we made, you know, back in 2007, is called Crazy Sexy Cancer. And the definition of it is crazy. It's that out of the box thinking that someone says, oh, that'll never happen. That's crazy. And we say, watch us. Sexy is empowered. It's usually, it's to me, it's using your full gifts that you come here with. And cancer is my teacher. It's been my teacher for 21 years. It will always be my teacher, even if there's a day when I don't have it. And so that's why I called it crazy, sexy cancer. But back then, every network, every producer, every, everybody, even, you know, my, my doctor was like, do you think you could call it something else? Yeah. And I was like, no, because I'm making this for a certain group of people. And to these people, that title is like oxygen because everything before then was not at all like crazy, sexy cancer. Right. And so everybody said no. And I didn't take it for an answer because you know what? I said, none of this is as hard as cancer. So I was like, no, I'm doing it my way. And it didn't mean that I didn't have to make compromises along the way, but I stopped looking for permission from other people. And that may, meant that I had to build my own company. And that meant that I had to bang down many more doors. And that meant that I had to keep looking for an agent who would represent me when everybody else said, no, that's crazy. And that meant that I had to say that there's nothing wrong with me. I just haven't found the right person to work with yet. All I need is one person to believe in this project. And I found that person and she ultimately bought it and sold it to Discovery Channel. and. And then it went from there. I love that. Any final thoughts? So I wrote a new book. It's called I'm Not a Morning Person. And you got you got a knack for great titles. <laughs> That's a great title. Yeah. This thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it it's all about braving loss, grief, and those big messy emotions that happen when life falls apart. And I'd say the first part of my career, I was really focused on what we're eating. And this portion I'm doing a lot of work with, what's eating us. Mm -hmm. And every single one of us are going to have that moment, that rupture. And what I have found through the course of my own life of living with these difficult emotions and, you know, things that can happen um, is that our messy emotions can teach us how to be free but not necessarily free of the pain, right? Because the pain may still be there, but it's free of the barriers that keep us from fully alive living. And so whatever you're experiencing right now or any of your listeners are experiencing right now, tend to your hearts, tend to those emotions, tend to your body because you are meant to be here. And the more tending we're willing to do for ourselves, I believe the more joy we get out of this precious life that we've been given. Yeah, absolutely. In spite of whatever's going on. Yeah, and that's what it's about. I love that. Thank you for the teacher that you are, seriously. Mm -hmm. I think it's really beautiful what you're doing. Thank you. Um, How do people find out more about you? So I'm at chriscar.com. How do you spell that? Because I always want to ask. Yes, thank you. Chris with a K. Okay, good. K-R-I-S-C-A-R-R. 
And yeah. Are you on Instagram? I am. I'm at Crazy Sexy Chris. Oh, nice. Yeah. Crazy Sexy Chris. Okay. Beautiful. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And enjoy awesome. By the Thank way. you. Yeah. Yeah. That's it for this week's episode of The Higher Self. I hope that you can see that um, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what you're feeling, there is another way and there's, um, there's a way to experience this beautiful life filled with love, filled with joy, and to help other people to do it the same way as Chris is doing. We'll see you next week on The Higher Self. Thanks for watching this week's episode of The Higher Self. If you want to continue your journey of awakening your absolute highest self, I invite you to join our community by downloading the brand new Awaken You app right now. Simply go to dannymorell.com backslash awaken and the letter U to download the app and I will see you inside our community.